Welcome back. I'd like to thank again our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff. It's uh, still Wednesday, August the 8th, 28th. Uh, my guest in this segment is Howard Bream. Howard, you're with Extinction Rebellion, which uh, Vancouver is... Vancouver Island. Okay, Extinction Rebellion, Vancouver Island, and the name is becoming more and more well-known. So what is Extinction Rebellion and what's going on? Before I answer you, I just want to thank you, Jack, on behalf of Extinction Rebellion, Vancouver Island, for the many years of excellent coverage on the environmental uh, crisis that we, we face. Uh, uh, it's it's great to be to be uh, here today and be able to talk as an avowed fossil fuel abolitionist and climate insurrectionist and get mo more than a two second sound bite doing it. So thank, thank you very you. much. Extinction Rebellion. Uh, for those that uh, are unfamiliar with it, it started uh, just last October. In it, it was launched in the UK by uh, Roger Hallam and uh, Gail Bradbrook and, and others in, in reaction to the climate denial populism that has been sweeping the, the planet and, uh, and based on science, uh, specifically the very, very dire report that the International Panel on Climate Change released uh, last fall. And from that point on, it's been a concerted uh, uh, effort to mobilize a, a mass uh, participation in mass civil disobedience. And it has grown from, uh, it is now a, over a million uh, members around the world in uh, over uh, uh, two dozen countries and uh, hundreds and hundreds of affiliates as well. And Extinction Rebellion Vancouver Island is, is one of those. And we've been... Uh, I've heard there have been some very big uh, events in Europe. Well, uh, they, they've been uh, from occupations to shutdowns. It's, it's all nonviolent uh, uh, direct action that they've been employing, as we have been doing much the same thing here. Uh, you may recall the Blue Bridge shutdown uh, 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 some time ago, and we've been doing uh, uh, just recently uh, a, re a response to the wildfire uh, smoke crisis and its health impacts. We've had uh, two actions in, in respect to those. Uh, we've got many in the pipe. Uh, October 7th is a global day of action for Extinction Rebellion, and it will be highly disruptive from coast to coast here. You know, to me, it's unfortunate that that you you as a group trying to do something good would have to disrupt. Why should why should we have to disrupt to pressure our government to do to save our lives? I mean, the whole thing seems crazy. It's a good question, but if we look to the North Pole, we we see Greenland is is melting, the ice sheets there. If we look to the south, it's the West Antarctic uh, ice sheet is uh, could could raise uh, sea levels uh, to uh, uh, levels that we, we haven't seen in millions yeah. of years. And then we're, we're facing a triple, uh, double, uh, a triple whammy of uh, uh, both climate collapse, uh, ecological collapse, biodiversity loss, and uh, social collapse. And it's, this collapse is terminal, and it's, and it's occurring now. It's just uneven. We're seeing it in many areas of the planet, and uh, uh, our uh, elected climate deniers are uh, 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 thinking they're winning it in some in some quarters, but winning it slowly is is really extinction for the the great many of us. So you're talking about system change. Yeah, I, I don't think that we can possibly. Uh, it, it's like this: either uh, we. Uh, we see life itself end so that capitalism continues, or we stop capitalism as we know it in terms of disasters and uh, the, its, its abuses and, and allow for uh, healing and recovery. Uh, it's a moral choice. It's a pretty, it's pretty stark choice. And uh, Extinction Rebellion is convinced that everything to date has not worked and it, it requires the type of civil uh, disobedience that is now being employed. 
You've been arrested five times? Uh, I've, I've got some 14 convictions uh, from uh, my many years in the environmental movement. I've been a staff campaigner for most of my uh, adult life. Most of it was in with working charities. And now that I'm retired, I've, I'm back to um, uh, a more disruptive uh, way of uh, uh, system change. Yeah, yeah. It's, the most uh, recent was just on the 19th where I I uh, challenged the, uh, the Catherine McKenna, the federal environment minister, with a citizen's arrest. And uh, I was uh, esco escorted away from her uh, press conference and uh, uh, I was arrested, but uh, charges were dropped. And I mean, I guess what you want to do is just be out there and showing that the status quo that Catherine McKenna represents is not going to save us. She's not only going to not save us, she's going to kill us. <laughs> yes, we, yeah. we are we have the front we're seat in our, uh, yeah. to uh, something that's never occurred. in uh, uh, The last time we had CO2 emissions at the levels that there currently are is 66 million years ago. And now we have a gentleman in the White House who is, uh, one could argue, is single-handedly going to exceed the human lives lost in, in the, past, uh, the past great war against fascism in Europe. Yeah. And uh, for anyone like uh, Catherine McKenna or uh, her, uh, her, uh, her boss, the Pied Piper of Pipelines, um, Justin Crudeau, as we like to refer to him, um, or here locally, um, uh, John Fracking uh, Horgan. Yes. Uh, we have gentlemen now that we have to confront uh, and, and make this as personal as it is for us and our families for directly them. with them. Yeah. Uh, Howard, thank you very much. We're going to continue with uh, Extinction Rebellion with uh, a second guest. Thank you, Jack. Thanks very much. Welcome back. Our second Extinction Rebellion guest is Mark Nykanen. Nykanen? You got it. Okay. Um, we're going to be talking about the role of the media, I guess, in this whole climate and environmental disaster. And Mark, your background is with media. At least many years ago, you worked with NBC. Maybe you can just tell us a bit about that. Well, I'm sure. I was hired at a relatively young age by NBC as an investigative reporter, and I worked there for uh, seven years. Um, uh, won four national Emmys in as an investigative reporter and other things, and then decided to get out. I had. Uh, my own criticisms even then of the media. I felt like uh, even though my work had forced the resignation of the head of the EPA and led to emergency bans on uh, pesticides and things like that, that it was basically a carousel of faces and that uh, systemically that wasn't the way to go. It wasn't going to make substantial change. It was part of the infotainment. And I can say that because I was on a show opposite 60 Minutes. And I worked on camera, and I just thought, you know what? This doesn't work for me. So I changed my life, and I'm, I've been making a living as a novelist ever since. Okay. So um, the group Extinction Rebellion is going to have a media event That's right. on uh, September 17th. That's correct. Yeah. What day is that? Uh, do you... That's a Tuesday. A Tuesday, September 17th. Okay. And it's going to be in front uh, on Broad Street. That's correct. And Pandora. Uh, in front of the studios of Bell Media, which owns both the CTV network completely and CFAX Radio here in town. So maybe I can say why are you having this event? What's it about? Sure. Well, first of all, they're emblematic of corporate media in Canada. They're big, they're powerful, and they're basically pretty blind to the concerns of climate change. They don't do much of substance, and neither does most of Canadian media. There was a very interesting study done by Professor Sean Holman at Mount Royal University. He wrote an open letter to Canadian journalists this summer, and he pointed out that during the wildfires last year, when the smoke was choking communities in BC and all the way into Alberta, that um, there were 182 reports done by the three major newspapers in those two provinces. Okay, 182 reports, columns, editorials, op-eds. 
Of that, only 7.7% made the, what Holman called the demonstrable connection, and he's right, between wildfires and climate change. Now, that is an egregious act of malfeasance on the part of journalism. That's a crime against humanity. We have here in Canada temperatures rising at twice the rate of the global average. Our forests are getting, turning into tinder, tinderized by these conditions. They're rife for this kind of catastrophic collapse. And when media, big media, ignores that kind of an issue, they are not informing the public. Well, uh, unfortunately, I have to agree with you. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it is a crime against the planet and humanity, the way, the way the media basically works for the corporation on, on these issues. Well, let's, you know, just, I, I just got to jump in here, Jack. Here's the thing. When we look at corporate media, we have to think their main role is to make money. They don't want to make their viewers uncomfortable. What did Upton Sinclair say many years ago? That it's very difficult to get a person to believe an idea if that idea is, if their paycheck is dependent on not believing that idea. Well, that's the same thing that these corporations understand about viewers. There's a twist here because viewers really have a disconnect with trying to understand what's going on with climate change. Because if we really understand the gravity of the situation we're faced with, then that's going to make us pretty uncomfortable. So there's this, the consumers not really wanting to understand it because they don't want to suffer cognitive dissidents of knowing too much and it, continuing to drive big SUVs and flying off for lavish vacations. And there's the corporate media overlords who are very, very happy to keep it like pablum when they're reporting about the climate and not make the connective tissue that Professor Holman, for instance, talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what is going to happen on uh, September 17th? Well, we're going to have a few things to say in that, about, uh, in that demonstration about what's not happened at CTV. For instance, on May 6th, when the United Nations released a report saying that upwards of a million people excuse me, a million species would go extinct because of human actions in this great mass extinction, the sixth mass extinction. Um, CTV managed to mention that once, once on the national show, all right? That is pathetic. But what did they spend a disproportionate amount of time on? The birth of a royal baby. Now, a million species likely to go extinct with the birth of one royal baby. This says plenty about the priorities, and it's all about entertainment and really, really pandering to the worst kinds of viewer exploitation, in my view. What do you think we can do to give ourselves the media, which provides us with so much information. Well, I'll tell you, I think we need to support media that does give us information and turn our backs on media that refuses to do it. And I think we need to point the finger at media malfeasance when it takes place. And that's what we're seeing. I think like, the Guardian newspaper, for instance, is doing a really good job in covering the climate crisis. Uh, Democracy Now! with Amy Goodman doing an excellent job on a daily basis of covering the climate crisis. There are newspapers like the Washington Post and um, the New York Times that also do a pretty good job, despite the fact that they're weighted down by a lot of consumer advertising for expensive watches and lavish vacations and things like this, which we're really going to have to start rethinking as a society. Yeah, that's for sure. Mark, we're out of time. Um, how can people just show up at this event? When, Absolutely. When is it? Okay. We invite people to show up. Okay. We're going to be setting up at 1130 on Tuesday, September 17th. And um, by noon, we're going to have this event underway. I guarantee you it'll be interesting. It'll be entertaining. It'll be serious. And it will not hesitate to point fingers. And I'm very glad you're, you're focusing on one of the biggest problems we have on so many different issues, which is the corporate media. Yeah, absolutely. Mark, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Yeah. It was a pleasure. And thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.